Hello everyone, my name is Carlos Otero and I will be doing my video presentation on the perovskite solar panels. So a little background on the perovskite mineral itself. It was discovered in 1839 by Gustav Rose in the Ural Mountains of Russia. It was named after Count Lev Perovsky, hence the name perovskite. So the mineral itself is made up either of a calcium titanium oxide or a calcium titanate. It has an ABX cube structure that acts as an insulator. So basically any mineral that has the same structure will either have the Perovsky octahedra or it will be a Perovskite. So what makes these guys so amazing? So for everybody sees the solar panels that we have on the roofs now, well those are silicone based photovoltaic panels. Great technology, they've been around for years, they're a lot cheaper to make. Issue is, is that in that time span, They've never been able to get above the 25% threshold of uh, solar efficiency. So the nice thing about these perovskite panels in that just in an eight year span, they've jumped from 3% to 22% of efficiency, which is right there and really, really close to what the silicone based photovoltaic cells can do now. So, I mean, just for that alone, the potential is there. We just have to keep researching and going. So now, what is, how do we make this product? So basically, you just take a piece of glass and you're gonna go ahead and coat it with a dense layer of titanium dioxide. What this does is it acts as, it, it, it prevents the electrical charge generated from sunlight from escaping the cell itself, which of course you don't want to have happen. So once that, after that coat is sprayed on, <clears throat> and dried, they drop a few drops of a porous and less dense titanium dioxide or other dioxides and place that into a centrifuge to go ahead and spin it out to where everything is evenly coated. Heating it in the oven conditions the glass for solar cell use. Now comes time for the engineered perovskite. So in the cases that I've been studying, it was a lead iodide and methyl ammonium iodide that was literally just dripped onto these pieces of glass. Once those are dripped on, they will go ahead and spin them out again in the centrifuge. And then all that's needed is to slowly heat it up on a little heating plate. And well, voila, you've got a tiny device that turns solar energy into usable energy. It's a, it's a great great potential in this technology. For instance, one hour of sunlight that hits the earth would generate enough power to power everything that we need electrically on earth for a whole year. So anytime that we can go ahead and utilize new technologies to increase our efficiencies and decrease our dependency on greenhouse gases and pollution that's being released from the usage of these elements to survive, that is obviously a good thing. Uh, of course, negatives of this product is right now, they're just tiny. They're little tiny solar cells that are being mostly done in labs. And so they, they've not manufactured them. They've not gone for larger scale. So they're also trying to find ways to extend the life of the panels themselves. Now, silicone-based panels have a, a lifespan of about 30 years. So that's a pretty high bar that they need to work on. And of course, they're still trying to increase the efficiency. So once those, those aspects are done, it is a very viable option. So again, uh, in conclusion, there is a lot of potential with this. For instance, you can go ahead and put them on thinner little panels and they're just tiny little rolls of, that you can unroll onto a roof and boom, you've got yourself some solar panels. Um, it, it won't happen overnight, but in the short amount of time that they have been working on it, they've made some great strides. So looking forward to the future with perovskite solar cells that can maybe perhaps help uh, with our energy needs in the future. Thank you.